Okay. So what sounds are there in California languages? What I want to go ahead and do is pass out, if someone would like to help me, maybe a couple people would like to help me. We have uh, a handout here. And there should be 90 copies, so go ahead and give that to... There should be extra, lots of extra, even if there's more people here than uh, what's signed up. So we'll go ahead and pass that around. And this is from this book, California Indian Languages, uh, by Victor Gola, who um, graduated from also UC Berkeley and also taught at Humboldt State. I have some big shoes to fill. <laughs> But he was a specialist in languages of California, and he created this book in 2011 regarding all the different documentation of California Indian languages that's uh, known to be. And so that's the, the place that this comes from. So again, this is an Americanist system. Chances are documentation will be uh, very similar to what's used, uh, this writing system that's used here. But there's also other writing systems. Okay. And what I want to go ahead and do is to start by talking about how this chart is organized. Because that'll help us uh, figure out and understand how these sounds, what does it mean by using these certain symbols, what are the parts involved in our, in our uh, vocal tract, and also what are the meaningful sounds in our languages. So I'm going to go ahead and focus on this little area to the top left. Can everyone see that area top left? And on your, on your handout? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. So as you can see, there is a there are columns that go across the top, right? And there are, um, how do I say this? There are uh, labels across the top, and there's labels in a column down that organize rows. Everyone can see that, right? Vertical, horizontal, yes. <laughs> if you have a writing utensil, I'd like you to make an arrow across the top. Everyone can do that. Got it? Okay. So these labels up here, bilabial, interdental, dental, alveolar, that organize the columns. Columns are vertical. These are places of articulation in the vocal tract, and they are organized left to right, corresponding to front to back in our vocal tract. So we have here bilabial, the very first column, right? So that is our lips. What is the last column that you guys can see? Someone? Laryngeal? That's all the way back in your throat. <laughs> and so from each place that's possible in a California Indian language, you have from your lips all the way to the back of your throat. That's left to right, front to the back of your throat. You can go ahead and write places of articulation if you'd like. Um, these are places in the mouth and in the throat. I'd like you to make a second arrow top to bottom. And these are the rows. So we have um, stops and fricatives all the way down. This is organized by manner, top to bottom. So we have places in the mouth, but then we also have how the parts of the mouth are interacting. And for most of these sounds, it's the tongue, some part of the tongue, either at the front, or well, bilabial, we're using our lips, right? But following bilabial, we have interdental, dental alveolar, all the way back to pharyngeal. With manner, what we're talking about is how close are the articulators, for most of these it's the tongue, except for bilabial, 
how close are those things interacting? And so, for example, we have stops, right? The first one here under bilabial is a P. Go ahead and make a P. Go ahead and say the word stop. Stop, okay. There's, there's, a, there's P, right? Notice how the lips are touching when you do that? So they're touching. That's how close they are. As you move down in the columns, whatever's involved is moving farther apart, and it creates a different sound. We have, let's see here, an F sound. Go ahead and make an F sound. Go ahead, uh, make a V sound. V. Okay. There's a, a flow of air, right? And so from the stops, it's a little bit farther apart than if it was completely closed. Can you feel that? Okay, good. So manner, top to bottom, how close is the tongue? Or in this case, the, the lips for this first column. Across the top, places of articulation, front to back, in the vocal tract. I quiz my students on this. This is on a midterm for my class. <laughs> There's other contrasts here, though, that are involved, and I want to go ahead and speak to those. And so underneath, for instance, stops, underneath fricatives, there's these other things involved, these other contrasts. And so you see, for instance, uh, under stops, we have plain, aspir aspirated, glottalized, and voiced. And under fricatives, we have plain and voiced. These contrasts are um, speaking to some of the air that's involved in the vocal tract and what we do with it. And so as far as, let's go ahead and say the word, um, let's go ahead and say pat. Pat. What I'd like you to do is to take your hand and put it in front of your mouth. Say the word pat. Do you feel that puff of air? OK, you just made an aspirated P. <laughs> There's air to it. Go ahead and say the word stop. Was there air for that P? That was a plain P. In some languages, those are meaningful sound differences that uh, can trigger word meaning differences. In English, it's just versions of the same sound, right? Right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> And so aspirated involves a puff of air. If you want to write that down, go ahead and do that at this time. Plain does not. In English, we tend to do things at the end of the word plain. But we like to do things at the beginning of the word aspirated. That might not be true in your language. In fact, probably not. Okay, I'm going to have to shift to a different consonant because hoopas don't have P's. <laughs> Hoopa, yeah, I know, it's a problem. <laughs> we'll go ahead and do this with, uh, let's do it with my name. Go ahead and put it in front of your mouth, uh, right here. Kayla? Feel the, feel the air? Say the word talk. No air. There's another category, glottalized. There's languages here who have glottalized consonants. And what that means is that there is extra air pressure, extra air. OK? So I'm going to go ahead and try this. Um, let's go ahead and say, uh, I'll go ahead and do it. Ko. Ko. Can you hear it? OK. Let's try, um, let's try it aspirated. Ko. Co. 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 All right. So what I'm doing, what's happening with that glottalized consonant? Well, it's a little hard to see. Um, I don't have an Adam's apple. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> you can really see it up here, huh? <laughs> 
what's happening is that my vocal folds are coming together along with that closure that the K sound's making. And it's rising when I do a, a glottalized consonant such that the air pressure is more. Okay? So I don't know if we want a man to get up here and try to demonstrate because you can really see it moving. <laughs> but go ahead and do it again. Oh. I can hear it really good. People are doing it really well. We have um, people who are doing it quite well, so thank you. <laughs> there's other languages. There's other possibilities. I worked with a Mayan language, um, Yucatec Mayan, in undergrad, and doing some field methods. Uh, instead of pushing up, they go down, and there's a negative air pressure, and things go in. I'll go back to B because it's easier for me to do this one. The word for corn, I think, is, oh, now I got stage fright. Cub, cub, cub. I don't know if you can see it. Cub. <laughs> Hopefully it's going down. <laughs> but you can hear it. There's, a, there's an inflow of air, right? Nobody in California does that, so it's not included here. But I just wanted to give you some of the possibilities. And then lastly, um, there's something that we do. Uh, voiced. This is probably easiestly, easiest demonstrated with the fricatives. And so we'll go ahead and make uh, the F sound again. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the lips, right? Okay, so what I want you to do, let's see here. Okay. Go ahead and make a V sound. You feel your voice vibrating. That means your glottis is not touching, not making a stop, but it's come together. Your, your vocal folds are coming together, and there's making a vibration. That's our voice. When they're far apart, farther apart, they don't do that. And so let's go ahead and go between F and V. All right. You feel the difference? That's your voice. That's your vocal folds. So with consonants that are stops, um, we're basically measuring how soon you, you start your voice after it, you have that stop. But for things that are more continuous, more airflow, like a fricative, then it's just whether or not that's engaged, OK? All right. So, so far we've covered plain, aspirated, glottalized, and voiced. <laughs>